This is the Washington Times front page for Wednesday, January 19th, 2022. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. The Biden administration's scramble to prevent a Russian invasion of Ukraine will shift into high gear, with Secretary of State Antony Blinken visiting the Ukrainian capital of Kiev to show support. Guy Taylor reports the Kremlin denies any plans to invade Ukraine and accuses NATO of sparking the crisis by moving its forces and arms nearer to Russia's borders and refusing to rule out membership for former Soviet states such as Ukraine and Georgia. The Biden administration says it is Russian President Vladimir Putin who is exacerbating tensions and making it hard to strike a diplomatic resolution. U.S. officials have stopped short of outlining what action they're willing to take to prevent Putin from repeating the events of 2014 when Russia forcefully annexed the Crimea Peninsula from Ukraine. Blinken will also hold a high-stakes summit with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov later in the week. An unlikely mix of conservatives, liberals, homeschoolers, and teachers unions are citing pandemic-era virtual education as a reason to end K-12 standardized testing. The last two years of online instruction have interrupted the months of classroom time needed to teach and administer the tests. Sean Salai reports some state education officials have implemented alternatives, and those in Illinois and Florida have considered altering or abandoning their assessments. Opponents of standardized testing say some children have stronger test-taking skills than others, and many colleges have de-emphasized the influence of scores on applications. Until the pandemic, most schools didn't make any changes because of the billions of dollars in federal education funding that is tied to the system. New York Governor Kathy Hochul is running the Empire State because scandal sank Andrew Cuomo, but she's on pace to now win a full term with record fundraising, high approval ratings, and sizable polling leads. Tom Howe reports former New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio said this week he won't challenge his fellow Democrat. That comes one month after New York Attorney General Letitia James dropped out of the primary, which is scheduled for June 28th. A Siena College poll released this week said Hochul had the support of 46% of Democrats, compared with 12% for de Blasio, 11% for New York City public advocate Jamon Williams, and 6% for Congressman Thomas Swosey, with 24% unsure or naming another candidate. A reminder that you can find all these stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page. If you don't have access to the Times yet, you can visit WashingtonTimes.com slash George for a special subscription offer. As President Biden enters his second year in office and COVID-19 enters its third year of disrupting lives, Americans are questioning institutions in new ways, and academics are trying to understand what it all means. Seth McLaughlin reports as of last year, 13 of them had less than 50 percent of public confidence. Small businesses and the military remain well-respected, and police squeaked back above 50 percent after slipping in 2020, the only institution that saw an increase in confidence last year. Public health officials worry the lack of confidence is hurting efforts to control the pandemic. People on the political right have long tuned out the Biden administration's admonitions, and those on the left are starting to do the same. As bad as things may seem to be, polling numbers show they've been worse. The average confidence rating for all the institution's Gallup surveys was 33% last year. The number dipped to 31% during former President Barack Obama's second term and reached 32% at one point in former President George W. Bush's second term. And finally, President Biden's first two speeches of 2022 set a stern and combative tone. Jeff Mordock reports the tough talk came in bookend speeches last week to mark the anniversary of the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol and to push for reforms of the nation's election laws. Democratic strategists say taking a more cantankerous tone is a way to raise the stakes for voters ahead of midterm elections. The president changed his tone after a couple of political losses over the end of the year. His Build Back Better plan was thwarted by fellow Democrats, and inflation hit its highest level in 40 years, among others. Find all today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app. And find us on your favorite podcast platforms just by searching Washington Times in your favorite podcast app. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo.